Hello everyone and welcome to a series I'm calling Budget Bracket Busting, where we try and play budget decks that are competitive. So according to Stream Deckers Upload, this deck costs about $65 to obtain from MTGO Traders, which is I think about the average price. Um, the idea is I want to build decks for about for less than about 100 bucks is usually considered budget to play on Moto. Um, this will be a lot less if you were going to rent it, etc. But most of the cost in this deck is tied up in Ensnaring Bridge, Castle Lockthwain, and um, I think that's it. Oh, the rack. The rack. Each, each one of those groups of cards is like, this is $10, this is slightly over 15 and this is like 20 So I think, I think I did my math right there. 10 20 and 15 45 Okay, so plus all the other cards is probably about what we're looking at here. So this is 10 rack. Um, the idea here being we're trying to empty our opponent's hand as fast as possible so they die to the rack and shrieking affliction. Um, and snaring bridge I thought was too vital and does not have a budget replacement, which is why it is the majority of the cost of the deck. Uh, we are not running any man lands. We are not running um, like urborgs or anything like that to help support our smallpox, which is why we are not running colorless lands. Um, there are plenty of ways to upgrade this deck, so this is a good starting point for if you wanted to play a rack or rack pox style deck. Um, so without any further ado, let's take our budget deck into our modern league. Uh, as you can probably tell from that image, this is being recorded immediately after the Tron video that went up earlier today, so welcome back if you watched that. All right, no one mana hand hate, but we do have wrench mind and a good amount of removal plus smallpox, so I think I'm going to keep. Our opponent being on the play does suck, but they did mulligan. They start gemstone mine into serum vision, so it looks like another ad nauseum player. Um, ad nauseum should be one of our better matchups, hopefully. Um, unfortunately, our creature removal is going to be basically worthless. We draw wrench mind, so play deck more salvage tapped. Um, so ad nauseum being as prevalent as it is is quite interesting because I feel like that deck is something that is easily easily hated out of the metagame. Um, there are so many things that uh, can ruin our opponent's day. They put one card on top and one card on the bottom. Well, I don't want to smallpox yet, because my opponent would just sack gemstone mine when it has no counters on it left. Or, they would just sack gemstone mine um, when it's, like, imminently about to destroy itself anyway. Okay, opponent loses Summoner's Pact and Simeon Spirit Guide. So this might actually not be Ad Nauseam. This might be, um, what's it called? Neo Brand. It would appear that way. So our opponent is going to Neo form away... Allosaurus Rider to get Grizzlebrand. If they don't, in the top 14 cards, find enough cards to like keep going off, Smallpox just wins. Okay, opponent has to discard down to 7. So Smallpox should get us the victory here. Um, it's not likely our opponent will keep uh, a hand that is like an effective reload for what's going on, especially not after discarding a Grizzlebrand. Okay, we draw a Swamp, so play a Swamp. Smallpox. We could heartless. Uh, actually, we can't heartless act because of Neo uh, Neo form, <laughs> giving them a one one counter. But uh, smallpox is pretty brutal for our opponent's deck to overcome. All right, so we bring in Pithing Needle, Sorceress Spyglass, and we drop Heartless Act. We'll bring in Ashiox, and we'll go down. Probably Funeral Charm and Fatal Push. Um, I would not mind extirpates over fatal pushes because fatal push once again doesn't really hit anything. Grave hate here is like okay, but we just brought in um, extirpates, cling to dust, etc. Uh, so I don't think we will need more grave hate than what we got right now, and we'll run it back. All right, opponent chooses to play first. We do have triple blackmail, which should be quite nice. Well, we, we will keep this hand. <laughs> and game. <laughs> Alright, opponent starts Botanical Sanctum. Um, so we start by playing Swamp. 
and the rack. Pass the turn. All right, play Shrieking Affliction. Shrieking Affliction, pass the turn. So if this is post Zendikar, you can always play the two mana destroy enchantment opponent controls card. Okay. Opponent has an uncharacteristic number of lands. We draw an extirpate. So pass the turn because we can't really do anything right now. All right. Uh, would not mind drawing a... We're going to discard two blackmails. We need to keep our own hand size small because we have Ensnaring Bridge and our opponent can win on attacking um, rather than just with like a Lightning Storm or something like that. If our opponent starts discarding vital combat pieces, we can extirpate to see what's in their hand and have an idea of what we need to dodge to avoid the game or to avoid losing the game. All right, well, the good news is we just extirpated Grizzlebrand and our opponent can't respond. <laughs> All right, uh, if this had been surgical, we might still have lost, but because we are playing the budget extirpate with split second, we take round one with a fantastic 2-0 versus a combo deck, which is the kind of deck that this deck preys upon. All right, I'll see you guys in round two. Round two, here we go. All right, not a bad start. Um, unfortunately, blackmail does not let us see their entire hand, but our opponent is mulliganing, which makes blackmail way better. The cool thing about blackmail, um, as opposed to most other hand hate spells, is blackmail can actually take lands from your opponent. Alright, second blackmail. So go ahead and blackmail. Opponent has to reveal three of four cards in their hand so they can hide one card from us. Also, Braids is an amazing character. Um, this has the wrong flavor text on it. There's a different one um, that's a Braids blackmail card, and uh, it's like... Even even Braids has time away from the Cabal to explore her favorite pastime, Petty Extortion or something like that. It's fantastic. All right, Clothis, Utopia Sprawl, Glorybringer. I think we take Clothis. Pass the turn. When it draws up to four, plays a forest, they can Utopia Sprawl, which will give them access to four mana, and then we can wrench mind their last two cards in hand. Fantastic. So play a Swamp. French mind. Opponent can play anything they can top deck, though. We get rid of a Mountain and Glorybringer. It's another Utopia Sprawl. They get in for one, sure. We untap. We're drawing too many lands. Play a Rack. Pass the turn. Opponent takes three. Goes to 15. I don't know why you wouldn't start holding lands in hand to mitigate the damage from Rack, but okay. Opponent fetches, paying a life, going down to 14 which might actually change the clock. They take three and go to 11. We would like to top deck in its snaring bridge here. Okay, opponent plays a seasoned pyromancer. This is a problem. Okay, Elder Gargaroth, we need an ensnaring bridge, like right now. Um, eliminate can take out a lot of our opponent's mana. Blackmail, take lightning bolt. Um, eliminate will take out Seasoned Pyromancer. Pass the turn. Problem is we are on a three or potentially two turn clock and our opponent is on a four turn clock. All right, Torch of Defiance. On an uptick Chandra to draw, they hit Bolt. Okay, they attack us for six, we go down to eight. They gain three life so they can undo our rack indefinitely. Um, that's actually a game. They just plus and attack and we die. All right. So, um, we're going to take out Eliminate. I don't think it does enough here. Um, we could run Ratchet Bomb, but I think we want Bantu's Last Reckoning. And hmm, I would not mind Ashiok, but I don't think it's absolutely necessary. Sorceress Spyglass and Pithing Needle can come in because they affect um, our opponent's Planeswalkers, which if we can shut those off are pretty fantastic. I'm going to cut Cling to Dust, even though the life gain might be nice. And I'm going to cut a Fatal Push. We're going to run it back. Now, because our opponent is an Arbor Elf deck, if they start Arbor Elf and we start Smallpox, they probably lose. All right, we'll play first. Okay, we have Smallpox. We have Rack, Blackmail, and Funeral Charm. So we're going to keep. 
start blackmail. Windswept Heath, Stomping Ground, Forest. Take Stomping Ground. Pass the turn. Like I said, it's actually kind of nice when your opponent has to uh, discard lands to blackmail and you're running smallpox for things like Utopia's Brawl. We untap, we draw another smallpox, which is not going to be supremely useful here, but smallpox away. I'm actually going to... We're going to discard Heartless Act, and I'm going to sack Castle Lockthwain. The reasoning here is if we draw our other Lockthwain, it will be tapped. And we don't need Lockthwain to win. So our opponent has a Windswept Teeth in their hand currently. All right. We draw a Swamp. We can Smallpox again, though I don't think that's correct. So we'll go ahead and cast the Rack, pass the turn. We're going to hold up Funeral Charm because we can kill Arbor Elves with it if they draw. Um, and we decide we want to do that instead of cast a Smallpox for some reason. Okay. All right, make our opponent discard. They discard Pillage. We untap. We draw a Swamp. Play a Swamp and Smallpox. Opponent stomps our face. They lose a life. Discard Bloodbraid. Probably sack their basic forest. Okay. But only has one card in hand now. If we, if we could top deck a Raven's Crime, that would be amazing. Or another Smallpox. Rack isn't terrible, but it's not the ideal situation here. Uh, we'd like to top deck Smallpox, we'd like to top deck Wrench Mind, um, Raven's Crime would be okay. Shrieking Affliction doesn't really do anything here. But our opponent's not playing lands currently, so I guess we got that going for us. But the fact that we're not keeping our opponent's hand low is um, dangerous. Okay. Um, we draw an Ensnaring Bridge, which is nice, but we do need to actually draw a land to play it. Okay. No damage from the racks. Okay, opponent plays a land as it was only a matter of time. Draw a deck more salvage, so we're going to play it. Pass the turn. Play Swamp. Play Ensnaring Bridge. Pass. Opponent plays a Wooded Foothills. Cracks Wooded Foothills. Finds a mountain. Plays Clothis. We untap and draw Blackmail. So let's take a look at what's going on over here. Bolt, Pillage, Pillage. Well, take Pillage. Opponent exiles a Smallpox. Casts a Bone Crusher Giant. We untap and draw Raven's Crime, so make them discard. They discard Forest. Opponent can Pillage our Ensnaring Bridge. They exile Raven's Crime. Pillage and Snaring Bridge. Now, if we could top deck a Wrench Mind, that would be fantastic. Fatal Push. Okay, pass the turn. Unfortunately for us, Fatal Push doesn't hit anything here. Okay, opponent attacks us down to two, and I think they have a Lightning Bolt. Yep. Okay. Well, it was close. And moving on to round three. All right, Raven's Crime, Raven's Crime, Blackmail is not the worst opener we could possibly have. Especially when our opponent mulligans to six. Hey, I recognize this name. It's also Ponza. Okay. We draw Funeral Charm. So with our opponent only having four cards in hand, let's Blackmail. Skoos, Gargaroth, Chandra. Take Skoos. Pass the turn. If they play a land and nothing else, we're going to make them basically lose their entire hand here. Play a Swamp. Raven's Crime. They discard Gargaroth. Raven's Crime. They discard Stomping Ground. Last card in hand is Chandra, Torch of Defiance. Okay, opponent cracks Verdant Catacombs. Plays a Stomping Ground, a Windswept Heath, and plays Chandra. That's a problem. We might be able to race a Chandra, though it's not incredibly likely that we can. When it ticks up for mana, I think that was a mistake. I think they meant to tick up for damage. Okay, start Swamp, play Rack, 
and we will stop on our opponent's draw step and do one of the meanest things you can possibly do in a game of magic. Hit them with instant speed discard. Oh, got Clothis. Not bad. Okay, opponent ticks up and hits a windswept heath. Um, play a second rack to accelerate the damage. Okay, we hit our opponent for six at their upkeep. Okay, they add mana and they play an Elder Gargaroth. Okay, we untap. We draw Dakmore Salvage. Play Ensnaring Bridge. And play Dakmore. Pass the turn. So opponent's going to take six. They can ult Chandra, and if they have a spell to cast, they can deal five to our face. But unless they drew Pillage, I don't... Unless they drew a way to gain life, I don't think they can win. They tick up to hit Pillage, they can hit Ensnaring Bridge, and then they can attack. But they're just going to die on their upkeep to the rack. Okay, they concede. Alright, so versus our opponent's deck, I do want Bantu's Last Reckoning. I'm going to drop Eliminate for that. Then, I think Sorcerer's Spyglass, Pithing Needle over Cling to Dust, and a Fatal Push. And we'll try it like that. Ratchet Bomb is probably also not a bad um, sideboard for this matchup. In fact, it might be better than Heartless Act, because it can nuke a whole bunch of one-drops, and that's what their deck plays. They play Arbor Elves, and they play Utopia Sprawls, but I just want a small pox. That's all I want to do. When it starts with a mulligan to six, which is good news for us. The more mulligans they take, the harder we punish them. Okay, so they start with six cards. They play Wooded Foothills. They crack Wooded Foothills and find a forest and an Arbor Elf. Okay. So play a Swamp. Blackmail. I'm going to look at all but one card in their hand. Wooded Foothills, Seasoned Pyromancer, Bloodbraid. Take Wooded Foothills. Pass the turn. As long as my opponent can't play a creature this turn. Alright, they play Utopia Sprawl. A second Arbor Elf. But no second land. Well, I'm not really that sorry about this. We're going to discard Wrench Mind. Opponent has to sack an Arbor Elf and a land with a Utopia Sprawl on it. Um, they discard Bloodbraid Elf because they're a long way off casting it. Okay, pass the turn. Opponent is holding a seasoned pyromancer in hand. They play a forest. Attack for one. Okay, play a swamp. Smallpox. Discard fatal push. And are we going to get the flawless victory? Opponent, no permanence, no hand. Okay, opponent is in only top deck mode. Okay, we draw Pithing Needle. We could name Arbor Elf, or we could name a fetch land. We know they're playing Windswept Heath as well as Wooded Foothills. Um, hmm. I think we wait on the Pithing Needle, really. We shouldn't name Arbor Elf because we could just Heartless Act it if they had it and we're going to play it. Pretty much anything we can top deck is good. All right, I'm going to Pithing Needle Windswept Heath. Or, you know what? We're going to name Wooded Foothills and make our opponent discard. Okay, we draw a Swamp. Play a Swamp. One more Swamp and we can start drawing multiple cards a turn, which means we're going to win. Okay. Sorry, I F6'd and should not have been. Destroy Arbor Elf. Pass the turn. That's three of four Arbor Elves. Okay, we draw a Swamp. Pass the turn. I should have named Windswept Teeth. Okay, we get an Ensnaring Bridge. Untap. We draw a Smallpox. Play Ensnaring Bridge. Um, Do we want to just Smallpox now? I don't think we do. We can wait. No, we're going to do this now because it denies our opponent the ability to play some things. We have enough lands, we can do this very safely. Opponent loses their forest. They discard Weather the Storm. Interesting. We draw a Swamp. Play a Swamp. No reason not to do this on our turn. Final Smallpox. Wow, the four Smallpox game. Opponent cracks Windswept Teeth. 
gets a stomping ground. Utopia sprawls. Oh no. Oh no, opponent. <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> Final small box. Sack a swamp. Pass the turn. Sorry. I know I'm playing slightly suboptimally, but from this position it's very hard to lose. Okay, pass the turn. Opponent finds and plays a forest. We draw a swamp, play a swamp, pass the turn. We are going to take multiple points of damage there. So many swamps. Okay. All right, we're not going to activate Castle Lockthwain basically anymore um, until we have no cards in hand at all. That way we only lose one. Okay, swamp. Funeral Charm, make them discard. Kind of looking for, like, Davriel. Another Shrieking Affliction. Pass the turn. So if our opponent ever gets low in the number of cards in hand, they just lose outright. We have not beaten them yet. Alright. We are now in double bolt range. Okay, opponent plays a Clothis, which is a big problem. We draw a deck more Salvage. Play Salvage, pass the turn. I can't believe we're going to lose this game after casting four small poxes. Simply because we can't find what we need to close out this game, and our opponent is going to drain us for six. Even drawing all of those extra cards, we just couldn't find what we needed. Alright, blackmail our opponent. Chandra, Pyromancer, Pillage. Um, take Pillage, I guess. Pass the turn. And we lose. Oh, man. So close. All right, last game. What do we want to do here? I think I'm going to try Ratchet Bomb instead of Heartless Act. We'll see. All right, this is a fairly decent start. We're going to keep. Um, starting Blackmail. It's not as powerful um, when your opponent's not mulliganing and has like a full hand of uh, seven cards. We either take Pillage or Pyromancer, and I think we take Pillage. Just the land destruction spell is like the scariest right now. Okay, no one mana ramp from our opponent means our opponent's hand is going to be quite a bit slower. So, Raven's Crime. Raven's Crime. Pass the turn. Play Castle. Play Davriel. Okay. Discard. Opponent discards a forest. They've discarded everything they showed us with um, blackmail. Okay, opponent plays Clothis. We draw another blackmail. Make our opponent discard. Bayloth! It would be a Bayloth, wouldn't it? I guess we should have blackmailed just to be safe. Alright, pass the turn. Opponent's going to take five here. They can attack Davriel, but they're going to gain back two. Okay, and they hit Raven's Crime. They play a land. And from this point, we kind of need um, Ensnaring Bridge. I mean, the rack does something. It does increase the damage they take. We're kind of racing right now. Okay, opponent goes down to 12. They're going to drain us for two, taking our other Raven's Crime from us. Hit us for four, we go to twelve. Draw Swamp. Blackmail our opponent. Take Verdant Catacombs. Pass the turn. That is the nice thing about uh, Blackmail late game. If they try and top deck and hold lands in hand, it doesn't work. Okay, opponent can drain us for two, go up to ten. Hit us for four, we go to six. We need an answer for this. Shrieking Affliction is not it. 
unfortunately. Pass the turn. Our opponent gained so much life and got a free creature. They're literally two damage from dead. Opponent drains us for two and attacks us. Two zero. Well, damn, we were really close there. Not often that I see the Bayloth tech, so I really think we should have won that. We had so many draws in game two. Game two, we definitely should have won. We just like couldn't find our ways to win the game or empty our opponent's hand. So, all right, I will see you guys in round four. All righty, round four, here we go. All right, um, blackmail, raven's crime, cling to dust. We've got options. We'll keep. This isn't the most amazing opener. Uh, it would be better with something like a wrench mind. However, it looks like we're against some form of control. Let's go ahead and blackmail and see if we can get a better insight into what's going on. Aethergust, Elspeth, Supreme Verdict. Well, two of those cards do nothing against us. Main deck Aethergust. Wow. All right. Okay. So our opponent fetched for a hollowed fountain. Play an island. They are very clearly some form of Azorius control. We draw Eliminate, which may or may not be good in this situation. Let's go ahead and make them discard. They discard Aethergust. Okay. I'm going to pass the turn. I'm not going to Raven's Crime here. I really want to make a third land drop next turn. I think it's very important. I don't want to run Shrieking Affliction just into Counter Magic. And we're going to try and just cling to Dust Elspeth at the end step. Um, it is something that can get consistent value repeatedly out of the grave, so it's worth cling to dusting. Uh, if they have to blow a counter spell on this, like, yeah, I can't imagine they would. Okay, now... Raven's Crime. Getting to three mana is really the important number in this deck. Okay? Raven's Crime. So once you start getting past three mana, unless you're playing a Castle Lockthwain or something like that, you really don't need to play any more lands. Um, before your opponent's hand is empty, I should say. It's good to have, like, one extra in hand, if possible, for Raven's Crime, but... Okay, they discard Remand. We'll play Shrieking Affliction. They cycle Shark Typhoon. Okay. Well, we have things that can kill a shark. Hmm. They play a Jace the Mind Sculptor. That is a big deal. Unfortunately, Eliminate cannot hit Jace. If it was Teferi, we could. Um, hmm. The problem basically lies in the fact that they're going to be drawing two cards a turn for a long period of time. We take one, we go to 19, and we draw Wrench Mind. I think that's actually our best move this turn, is to just uh, get rid of the two cards they're holding. Spreading Seas and Snow-Covered Island. Okay. When it takes three damage, they brainstorm. Okay, they get in for one, we go to 18. Untap, and Snaring Bridge. <clears throat> we cannot flashback or escape Cling to Dust. We have too many cards in hand. So I think what we do is just Heartless Act the Shark. Oh, and it will be taking another three damage off of Shrieking Affliction. Okay, they path their own Shark. And now we're going to have to deal with Colonnade. We do have Eliminate to kill Colonnade. Okay, opponent brainstorms. We can also play Ensnaring Bridge to stop Colonnade from attacking. Opponent gains control of our Shrieking Affliction with Archmage's Charm. That is particularly brutal. We get the Rack. Play the Rack. Pass the turn. So our opponent is still going to take 3 damage every turn. Okay. Opponent cracks Flooded Strand. I don't know why they didn't Brainstorm first. Oh, that's why. So Mystic Sanctuary, they're going to put Archmage's Charm on top. They play Wall of Omens. They draw Archmage's Charm. They play a land from the grave. They Brainstorm. I don't know if we can beat stealing all of our racks. That actually really sucks. I mean, we lost. We're losing to Jace. We're not losing to anything else. It's Jace that dug them out of this. If they hadn't had that Planeswalker or we had had a targeted uh, hand hate spell like uh, Duress to take Jace from them, 
uh, this would never have happened. So this is one matchup that we are losing basically due to budget constraints because we don't have uh, thought sees or associated effects in the main deck. I think if you were building this deck and you started with this list, Inquisition of Kozilek would be the first thing that you should purchase. Okay, gonna smallpox. I will be discarding Ensnaring Bridge. Mm, they're gonna draw two cards. They're not gonna gain control of the rack. Well, discard Bridge. Opponent sacks Wall and then has to sack a land. We will be sacking our island. Question mark. Okay, pass the turn. Opponent will take one damage. And go to six. Yeah, I think in order of importance, you would acquire Inquisition, then Thoughtseize, then Mutavault, then Liliana, I think, in that order. Maybe Liliana, Mutavault, swap that up. But yeah, I think we've lost. My opponent has like seven cards in hand now and can cast their actual real card advantage spells. I don't really... Oh no, they have four cards. I was like, wow, but it's during the resolution of the Jace uh, ability is what's happening there. So we take uh, three, we draw smallpox. Not really going to cast a smallpox. Not right now. Okay, they bounce the rack. Okay, put them brainstorms. And they play a hollowed fountain tapped. They play Teferi. Yep, we cannot beat two draw engines. All right, we're just going to concede. Okay. Um, eliminate hits basically nothing, and so does Heartless Act. So we're going to take those out and bring in Ashiok. Technically, Eliminate could hit a 3 mana Teferi if my opponent has one. I don't think they have one. It also can technically hit um, Colonnade, but I don't think it will. I'm also going to go down Fatal Push for bringing in Pithing Needle, Sorceress, Spyglass. Um, I'll bring in a second Cling to Dust and an Extirpate. I think having a Relic might also be good, but I don't know what I would take out for that at the moment. I think just having the one Extirpate is fine. Um, basically, Extirpate and Surgical Extraction are really important effects in any Rack deck or um, Mill deck. Basically... Anytime that you can look at your opponent's hand, if you see that they have multiple of the same card, like if they're holding three of the same card and you can thought seize one of them, um, you should, and you should extirpate or surgical it on their draw step. The, like, it becomes like lose two life, your opponent discards four cards, and it's ridiculous. Uh, Raven's Crime, Dakmore Salvage isn't bad. We can land a whole bunch of racks and then just try and Raven's Crime our opponent out by dredging Dakmore Salvage every turn. So, start Raven's Crime. Okay, opponent discards Verdict. We untap. We draw Smallpox. Smallpox here could actually be good, considering that my opponent uh, played a tapped land, and we were trying to run them out of resources. We can sack a Swamp, discard Dakmore Salvage, and then dredge Dakmore Salvage. But I think I just want to play the Rack and Shrieking Affliction here. It greatly reduces the chance that Smallpox will ever resolve, but we want to dredge and discard Dakmore Salvage repeatedly, and if we have to dredge it and play it because we don't have any other lands, it's not going to work out right. Okay, opponent plays an island. Spreading seas, a swamp. Okay, we untap, we draw a swamp. All right, now we can Smallpox. So play a swamp. Smallpox, discard Dakmore Salvage, Sack Swamp, or Sack our Island, I guess. Opponent discards a Cryptic Command. When they take no damage from the rack, they play a field into a Wall of Omens, sure. We untap, dredge Dakmore Salvage, Raven's Crime our opponent, and play a Shrieking Affliction. Pass the turn. And the plan is to keep doing that, basically, because our opponent has to play more lands to win, which means their hand size is going to get smaller. I really hate that the Moto UI occasionally picks up my button presses and starts filling in the opponent's time. Um, 
I don't know if anybody else saw that. I might be able to get it to do it again. Yeah, what is going on with this? Moto. <laughs> Unbelievable. Why can I type in that box? Okay, opponent cycles a Shark Typhoon X0. I think they're trying to hit a land. Okay. Dredge Salvage. Oh, I should have put one Nether Spirit in this deck. Okay, opponent discards Snapcaster Mage. Okay, I think we're going to draw naturally. Smallpox is very tempting here. But if we do that, we have to dredge Dakmore and play it. I don't think I'm going to, because my opponent has not tapped out, and I suspect a remand. Okay, they flash Snapcaster, targeting path. Okay, opponent plays an island. Gets in for two, sure. So, dredge Dakmore salvage. Play Dakmore salvage, smallpox. Um, if this resolves, this is quite good. Our opponent will sack Wall of Omens and probably Field of Ruin. Um, it gets them down to three cards in hand, which is important, and lets us put Dakmore Salvage back into the grave. Kind of surprised my opponent didn't activate Field there. Okay, they're going to Spreading Seas, another Swamp. <sighs> okay, I'm going to try drawing naturally again. Another Rack. Play it. Pass the turn. We need to top deck another black source and then, like, wrench mind. Alright, opponent gets an island, which is bad news bears for us. They get in for two, we go to 12. We're not gonna dredge, we draw an extirpate. Okay, pass the turn. Um, in response... No, we're gonna have to do this on our opponent's draw. I'm going to extirpate a Shark Typhoon on their draw step. Shark Typhoon is the thing that lets them draw cards as well as um, create threats. This has split second, so they can't respond. They, they can't respond, oh my gosh. Celestial Purge, Dovin's Veto, Mystic Sanctuary, and Path. Oh, they only had two. Okay. They get in for two, they take us to ten. So we know that our opponent has an uncounterable negate. Okay, they play Mystic Sanctuary. They're going to put Cryptic on top. Dredge Dakmore. Raven's Crime. Okay, they discard Path. So they draw Cryptic here. They get in for two. I take two and go to eight. Play Castle. Pass the turn. So the biggest problem is we're, we're not going to be able to get them to a low enough... Um, number of cards in hand before we just die which is highly unfortunate considering like we have four racks on the board but we just can't get them empty-handed plus they're holding up a cryptic like i can cast this but this just gets countered and drawed and they don't lose any cards in hand yeah all right well as i said before this deck is very hard for us to beat without um like under budget constraints and I technically could have played a version that costed a little more expensive than this. Um, I have Thought Seizes, I have Inquisitions, and I can play this again in the future if that's something people want to see. But I was trying to make a deck that would be easily affordable, and I felt that $60 if you wanted to play on Moto, or around that much was fair. Um, but really for budget deck series, I think under 100 is the fair uh, limit. All right, let's try Blackmail. Dovin's Veto. Okay. Opponent's going to fetch a Mystic Sanctuary and put Cryptic on top. After, of course, they get rid of our castle. They just get a Hollowed Fountain, no Mystic Sanctuary. That's interesting. Yeah. If we could have gotten our opponent down to one card somehow, they would have taken 12 damage. <laughs> Another Spreading Seas. Yeah. Look at that. Mono Blue 8 Rack. What are the odds? All right, let's see if we can win 50 play points. I'll see you guys in round five. Oop. Actually, I have something I have to do. All righty, round five, here we go. See if we can get back 50 play points, huh? Nope, I lied. All right, for real this time. All right, I'd love to play first. And I think this is fine. 
If we can land Avriel and then cast Smallpox, that'd be fantastic. The only way that this hand would be much better than it is is if this Fatal Push was um, some kind of discard spell. Preferably like a blackmail. Opponent is considering mulliganing. They begin with seven cards, okay. Start Swamp, pass the turn. Okay, opponent starts Blood Crypt and Haggles. So it looks like my opponent is playing Dredge. All right, I think Ensnaring Bridge is going to be pretty close to an automatic win, provided we can um, actually land it, of course. I don't know that my opponent plays any Abrupt Decays or anything like that in the main. Oops. All right, so they Dredge, and they Creeping Chill us. And they cast Cathartic Reunion. They're going to be milling quite a lot here. Okay, hitting another Creeping Chill, which will reanimate Silver Smote Ghoul and two Prized Amalgams. Okay, we draw a second Ensnaring Bridge. So play Ensnaring Bridge. Pass the turn. Problem is our opponent's going to get in for one big hit and then have Conflagrate, so I think that's actually going to kill us. Yeah. Dredging two Creeping Chills, then lethal damage when we cast one spell. That's pretty quick. Alright, well the good news is we have a lot of Grave Hate. So Crypt, Relic, Relic, Extirpate, Extirpate, Cling to Dust... Ashiok, Ashiok, Ashiok. And what comes out? Um, so a lot of the weaker discard we can take out, I guess. So like Wrench Mind can come out along with um, probably... Hmm, I'm not sure what else to take out here. Oh, Funeral Charm can come out. I'll cut a push... Um, and I'm going to go down a couple of Shrieking Afflictions, simply because Shrieking Affliction, it's hard to get dredged down to no cards, especially when they have something like Loam. I know that that's how we win the game, right? But um, the Rack is a much better way to do that. And I've got the feeling we're going to need the other interaction we have. Okay, we'll play first. Um, this hand is not great, but it does have Grave Hate. I'm going to go to 6, though. I would like some other interaction. Okay, this is much better. I'm going to keep, get rid of blackmail, and we will start Relic of Progenitus. Pass the turn. Ashiok Dream Render should be quite nice against a deck that is running fetch lands and the like. Okay, you get a Stomping Ground untapped and play Shriekhorn. We untap. Play Dakmore Salvage tapped, pass the turn, leave up Fatal Push Relic, when it mills two cards, make them exile one. Okay. Opponent does not mill any dredgers. Okay. So they're going to haggle, discarding Stinkweed Imp. They dredge Stinkweed Imp. So now they can dredge loam. Okay. Narcomoeba. I'm going to go ahead and just nuke the grave now. Okay, that gives us Davriel. As you say, did my opponent not have any other lands? Okay, they play a Forgotten Cave. We untap, we draw Smallpox. So play a Swamp. Play Ashiok. Mill our opponent. We hit Scalding Tarn, Ancient Grudge, Arid Mesa, and Copper Lion Gorge. Okay, opponent mills themselves for two at their upkeep. So they're probably loaming back Scalding Tarn right now. Cathark Reunion, dumping Stinkweed Imp, and Loam. They dredge three Creeping Chills, a Narcomoeba, and a Silver Smote Ghoul, along with an Ox. Sure. Not a lot we can do about that. Would not mind top, deck a, top decking a land here. I think that would be good. We untap. Okay. Play the land. Fatal push. 
Ensnaring Bridge, Ashiok Mill in Exile. We hit Amalgam, Reunion, Claim, and Mesa. Okay. Okay. When it shocks a stomping ground and just casts a Merchant of the Veil. We untap. We draw a Swamp. Play Davriel. Dav on our opponent. They discard a Silver Smote Ghoul. Smallpox. Opponent has to discard and sack a creature. We'll sack Dak more Salvage. Mill in Exile. Okay, opponent only has 12 cards left in their deck. We milled Merchant of the Veil, Gemstone Mine, Nature's Claim, and Silver Smote Ghoul. I think we've got this game pretty well locked up. Um, it would take our opponent discarding and then, like, using a Conflagrate, but I think they only run, like, two... They could also just have Artifact Removal, and that would that would really suck. Opponent Loams, no value. Okay, we draw a Swamp. Make our opponent discard. They discard Thug. Mill our opponent. We mill Imp, Ox, Cave, and Amalgam. Play another Swamp. Pass the turn. Oh, I think we're going to mill him out. <laughs> That's actually really awesome. Opponent concedes. We got the mill victory in 8-rack. What are the odds? Okay. Um, it's possible we want at least one Bantu's Last Reckoning. That's probably better than um, random kill spells, actually. We might be going a little heavy on the three mana slot, but if worse comes to worse, we can always blackmail ourselves. <laughs> Which is a weird thing, flavorfully, right? But who knows? Alright, um, I do like this. We have Extirpate and Tormod's Crypt. So, um, given what our opponent is doing, we should try and Extirpate something that um, is a payoff for dredging, but not necessarily a dredger itself. Unless we have to. So start Swamp, play Crypt, pass the turn. And what I mean by that is we should hit Prized Amalgams, or Silver Smote Ghouls, or Creeping Chills, or Narc Amoebas, that kind of a thing. Rather than Stinkweed Imps. Okay, opponent Cathartic Reunions. They're going to dredge Loam, so we're going to let them dredge. We have two Oxes and a Silver Smote Ghoul. I'm tempted to hit the ox, but I think the ghoul is better. There's a reason we don't do this on the draw step as well. Opponent has loam and stinkweed imp, nothing else. Okay. Let's go ahead and just uh, take a picture of this for later. Okay. Untap. We draw Ashiok, which is a good draw. Play Dakmore Salvage and play the rack. Okay, pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Always yield to that. Really hoping to top deck a land. I think that would be our best uh, best bet. Okay, opponent shocks a stomping ground. Hmm. Their hand was full of lands, so I'm fine with letting them have a scalding turn. All right, let's see if we can top deck a land. That's a land. Play castle. Play Ashiok. Mill in Exile. They're going to cycle Forgotten Cave. Are they going to try and dredge in response? Um, Yeah, I'm just going to crack Tormod's Crypt then. If there's something tricky going on there, I don't have the brain power to figure it out right now. I think this is fine enough. Oh, we got Bloodgast, Ox, Amalgam, and a Shriekhorn. That's a pretty brutal mill. So, pass the turn. Okay, opponent plays a Blast Zone. They're going to use that to get rid of the Rack or um, hit Ashiok with it. Actually really tempted to smallpox here. I think I'm going to. Smallpox. This guarantees that Ashiok will hit uh, one of their lands. Because Dredge does not play that many mana producing lands. Okay, they're going to tick up Blast Zone to two. So that's how they're going to answer Ashiok. Okay, so we are going to discard uh, Heartless Act. Opponent discards Narcomoeba. We'll sack Dakmore Salvage. Opponent will sack a Stomping Ground. Mill our opponent. Claim Merchant Cathartic Reunion and a City of Brass. Okay, play Rack. Pass the turn. 
because they put Blast Zone on two, uh, it's safe to play both racks now. Okay, opponent haggles. Discarding Stinkweed Imp and Dredges. They find a prized amalgam. That doesn't do anything, though, because they didn't hit anything to give them value off of it. Um, by removing Silver Smote Ghoul, it reduces a lot of the like returns from grave creatures they have. They basically have that in Narcomoeba, which makes Prized Amalgam a lot worse. We also milled over one of, I think, a Singleton Blood Gas that they have. Okay, they have two Blood Gas in their deck. So between that, the Narcomoebas, and the Silver Smote Ghouls, that's all of the returns from grave creatures they have. Opponent is prevented from searching their library. <laughs> <laughs> because of the hidden text on Ashiok that nobody, including myself, reads. Uh, smallpox Ashiok is pretty mean. They basically just got rid of a card in hand for no reason there. Um, I do want to make it to three mana, so I am going to dredge deck more salvage here. Mill our opponent. Exile their grave. There goes one of our other Ashioks. We had Arid Mesa, Mountain, Cathartic Reunion, and their other Bloodgast. Okay. I'm really surprised, I guess they're ticking up Blast Zone to 3. I was going to say, I'm really surprised that they're doing that instead of just casting Merchant of the Veil. Vale, because they're going to have to give up a land to do this, and they have precious little cards left in their deck. Um, and they have to spend all of their mana for a whole turn to do this. Okay, they just cast Stinkweed Imp. We untap. We draw a Swamp. Play a Swamp, mill our opponent. We can now start drawing additional cards with Castle. We hit Narcomoeba, Creeping Chill, Blood Crypt, and Copperline Gorge. Opponent can put, cre <laughs> can put the triggers on the stack, but they just lost those cards. They don't get any value out of them. Okay. Pass the turn. So we can't stop um, Ashiok from dying here, mainly because Fatal Push does not hit Stinkweed Imp. That was one reason why I was considering Heartless Act over it, but I was wondering if my opponent was going to play like a Golgari Thug or a Narcobiba on the turn that uh, we made that decision. Um, I guess them discarding the Narcobiba to Smallpox should have tipped me off, but getting one more mill out of Ashiok actually might be the difference between winning and losing. We'll see. Let's see what our opponent plays here. They're just going to cast Merchant. All right, we lost Ashiok this turn. So I'm going to Fatal Push. I want to keep my hand as empty as possible and prevent my opponent from uh, having as many creatures as we can. All right, play a Swamp. Go ahead and draw with Lockthlane. Play Relic. And exile my opponent's only card in Grave. Pass the turn. If we draw our last Ashiok, I'm pretty sure we win. Yeah, we're just going to F6 because we have no decisions that can be made currently. Okay, opponent claims Relic, which is going to give us extra life and time. I don't know why they would do that. Um, I don't know how much graveyard strategy they have left. They literally only have 11 cards in their deck. They play a second Stinkweed Imp, which at this point are just 3 mana 1 twos, which is an aggressively horrible rate. Um, play Shrieking Affliction. Pass the turn. Opponent is going to take 2 damage at their upkeep. Like, if they keep playing cards, they lose to the rack, which is what they should have claimed. But I think they're just so autopilot on, it's Grave Hate, I put, I'm a graveyard deck, get rid of it. Like, I think that's what happened. <laughs> Alright, opponent is going to Loam. Okay. They attack for two. Go down to 19. Draw an extra card. Ensnaring Bridge. Blackmail. Alright, we get to look at their whole hand. Take whatever we want. Our opponent can't play Prized Amalgam. I think we just, it might be more dangerous in the grave, honestly. I'm going to take Shriekhorn, though. Play Ensnaring Bridge. That prevents them from digging for, like, an Ancient Grudge. I think they only have one Ancient Grudge, though, and we've exiled it. Generally, um, Dredge tends to run two or three different artifact enchantment removal things, like Ancient Grudge Claim. Um, basically, to prevent themselves from getting surgical is the plan. Um, but we got lucky and basically milled over all of that, so we don't have to worry, I think. Okay, opponent sacks a land to kill both their Stinkweed Imps and our bridge. It's a bold move. Let's see if it pays off for them. Play a Swamp. Draw a card. Ooh. Smallpox. Opponent has to discard. They lose a life and a land here. We sack Dakmore Salvage. 
Okay. Pass the turn. Opponent is going to take two damage at their upkeep. They can dredge an imp and hit basically the rest of their deck into the grave, but they don't. Opponent loams back blast zone, mountain, and arid mesa. Okay. So that's how they're going to answer the racks. We draw an extirpate. We know they're holding Arid Mesa, Mountain. Hmm. So we could extirpate and hit Arid Mesa. Um, I think we're just going to pass. No. No, it's correct to hit Arid Mesa here. We know that's a card in their hand. We can exile it. Reduce the number of cards that they have. They have two Scalding Tarns, a Creeping Chill, a Stinkweed Imp, a Prized Amalgam. They have no blue lands left. Our opponent, our opponent can't cast anything. <laughs> they can't cast anything. All their lands are... They need, they need blue mana. They don't have any blue mana left. So our opponent can play a mountain, crack blast zone. All right. They dredge loam and creeping chill us. I think we, I think we beat dredge. I think we did it. Okay. Opponent plays a mountain. I am going to draw an extra card. Not going to dredge. We get a Raven's Crime. Okay, in that case, I am going to dredge Dakmore Salvage. Uh, opponent can discard. I was going to say, I think they have to cast Blast, or they have to activate Blast Zone here. All right, Raven's Crime. They discard Prized Amalgam. Raven's Crime. They discard Narc Amoeba. Pass the turn. When it cracks Blast Zone, gets rid of all the racks. So they're not dying to damage. But our opponent only has two cards left in their deck. They play a Stinkweed Imp. We untap. No dredge. Play a Swamp. Pass the turn. One card left in their deck. They hit us for one. No dredge. Davriel. Dav on him. Uh, we make them discard Prized Amalgam. They untap, they take two damage, and they draw the last card in their deck. So as soon as our opponent's next turn starts, that's game. All right, opponent loams back a blast zone and a scalding turn. Hits us for one. Blackmail. <laughs> Make him discard. And pass. All right, that's all the time I've got now. Let me know what you thought of uh, Budget 8 Rack, and uh, yeah, if you want to see more decks like this, I stream Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Uh, Mountain Time, 8 p.m. Eastern. I can't find the deck list right now. Over on Twitch, same username over there as you find me over here, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!